Oh, The Avengers was wonderful. The Avengers was uh, the show that I always wanted to work on. I liked The Avengers. They, they were good fun. They were, um, they were different to uh, the other TV series that I was working on at the time. It was the happiest, the happiest um, experience in film that I've ever had. The Avengers was just pure pleasure. The Avengers was uh, the show that I always wanted to work on. And prior to the Avengers, I was sh shooting for the Saint television series. And we did other series like The Baron, uh, etc. at that time. But I was shoot um, at that particular time I was on The Saint. When the stunt arranger and second unit director for The Avengers was a guy called Ray Austin. And Ray Austin, for some reason that I've never found out to this day, he wanted to come and work on The Saint. And he was working on The Avengers. So he came over to do my job on The Saint, and I went over to do his job on The Avengers. That's how I came to, to work on that show. But it was something that I'd always wanted to do. That was just my kind of show. The reason I got the job was they wanted somebody who knew film and knew the Avengers and I was uniquely qualified because I wrote the pilot of the Avengers you know way back in its videotape days and I'd written quite a few Avengers but in when it was videoed uh, you know the Honor Blackman days and before that the Ian, Ian Henry days so I was uniquely qualified and why I say film it, it is because Initially, The Avengers was produced by Julian Wintle, who had a big, was a very good film producer. He made the one that got away and, and things like that. Um, and we, uh, he surrounded himself with film people. I mean, our lighting cameraman was either Alan Hume, who did all the Bond films, or it was Gil Taylor, who went on to win two Oscars, one for Star Wars, I think, and, and one for uh, Repulsion, the, the Polanski. He was, he was out there every day. We developed broadcast quality video assist on our film cameras. First time it's ever been done. The video assist we use today is high quality, but it's not um, broadcast quality. And we use that on Saints and Avengers and so on, even in those days in the late 60s, broadcast quality video assist which was the first, that we were the first studio to do it. That was almost pioneering. That, yeah, that was ABC, yeah, yeah. They had a boom operator and it was a pub, an old English pub, uh, and it had lots of aeroplanes, uh, model aeroplanes, hanging from the roof, part of the set dressing. And uh, the guy had gone in there with the, with the boom and I think he shot down about four Messerschmitts and two Spitfires and this flashing around with the boom. And they asked him to leave, and I, I was asked to go on and finish it all. It was a, the cost of an episode of the Avengers was about, initially it was about fifty thousand pounds, I think, and then it rose to something like a hundred and fifty. God knows what it would be. Well, it'd be a million today. I had think there was a little bit more money on it for the producers and that, but same sort of thing, you know, a sort of six day week and working very long hours to get the schedules done. They, they work to a schedule, which is only right in a way. A thousand foot of 35 would be something like 400 pounds-ish. 16 mil would be about 120. The same 400 foot 16 mil is a thousand foot 35 mil running time. So it's a big saving. And so all the TV series, like it's not the original Saints and Avengers, all 35 mil, but the later ones were shot 16. Just the stock cost and processing is an enormous saving, especially if you think it's 52 weeks shooting virtually on a, uh, the series. And if you're using, say, 4,000 feet of 35 mil a day, as opposed to four, 400 foot of 16 mil, gives you the same screen time. So yeah, it was a major difference. And then the processing on top. Now, when I was fired off the Avengers, my, 
myself and Albert, because they thought it was easy. And then they brought us back on. They were running around like headless chickens. And they had, um, they had a script, which I'd written actually, and they were gonna shoot, and then they, they brought us back. Um, and Terry Nation was script editing, and he was at a loss, because he said, I keep cutting, and they keep coming back and saying, oh no, we want more. And I said, Terry, what we do is we cut it as much as we can, and after that, no more, because it is now their job to facilitate that script. And that took the burden off him immediately, and we're all back online again. You was given a free hand, providing that you finished it pretty much on schedule. Like during the day, you could shoot it in any way you wanted, provided you finish it at the end of the day. And you, directorially, you had a free hand and you could do whatever you wanted. There was a certain amount of money, certain, certain budgetary requirements, and then you could shoot it in any way you wanted to do it, um, providing you met that sort of criteria. And, but around about that time, I was shooting a lot of sort of uh, tricky angles and low angles and moves with the cameras that you didn't see too much at that point in television that later were to be uh, copied many times over. I know that I used to write episodes to give Pat a brief holiday and Diana a brief holiday. And that would, you'll see those. I mean, there's an episode called Joker uh, which is all Diane, and Pat comes in, he's at the big, very beginning and the very end, and that's because in between times he was down in Chichester in his cottage. <laughs> at the back of Elstree Studios at that time was a set that was permanent all the year round, and uh, so yes, we, uh, a lot of the scripts in included uh, these standard sets were at the back of the stage, during the Avengers and the Saint, there was always their apartment was a standing set permanently on the stage. So the Saint's house and the Avengers house were always there 52 weeks a year. So every time it rained or something happened, you could always come back and shoot the scenes in their living room. Well, uh, we, we probably had stage one or two, but it was the second stage that was you know, when nobody wanted stage five uh, for several reasons. It had birds nesting in it. Um, and it also wasn't, wasn't very soundproof. And it was pretty archaic, actually, but we got by. Again, you, you'd cut your cloth accordingly. We'd do a lot of stuff like fights and things in there where you didn't have, to, it had no dialogue or you could wild it later. Oh, the Avengers was wonderful because Diana Rigg is such a laugh. She never forgets a line. We have to go back to my dear Pat, who always forgets a line. And sometimes he'd make the murderer, who was innocent, and so on, and say, Do, did I have to tell the director? I said, yes, Pat, you know, because, you know, it doesn't look good. But meanwhile, he was a charming man. They, were, they had such a rapport. And um, Patrick was such a gentleman. I mean, if you've seen Patrick as Steed, you've seen Patrick, really. That's his... The nice thing about Patrick is he, he's one of the few actors who never talks about himself. Patrick was a different type of actor. And um, he, was, he was a very sort of giving actor to his uh, co-stars and things. And uh, so we had a very good relationship. I mean, Julian Wintel cast sort of almost sight unseen Elizabeth Shepherd. <clears throat> and after two days shooting, Albert and I, and eventually Julian, realised um, it was a mistake. She's a good actress and she looked all right, but she had no sense of humour. And, and also, also she had, which is the worst thing, she had a husband who was a failed actor. So the, the script would go home and he'd come back the next day and he changed everything. <laughs> <coughs> Which we were never allowed. You had to shoot what was there. 
and we'd photograph women in a certain way. And uh, we, on the close-ups of Patrick McNee, we'd film them uh, perhaps with uh, um, a close-up lens from some distance away because we wanted them to look good too. And so we, we didn't get right up close to the wide-angle lens which would have distorted their faces unless that was part of the actual sort of imagery. It was the happiest, the happiest um, experience in film that I've ever had. The Avengers was just pure pleasure. My, my memory of it is laughing all the time and working all the time.